again everyone. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to create a golf statistics calculator. For all you out there who are golfers, you may find this handy. I recently started really caring about my game and so I decided that I wanted to track my statistics a little more closely. So what you see on your screen may look a little busy, but it's actually very simple. So let's begin. First thing you want to do is you want to start with a blank document. So we're going to come down here let's just rename this sheet live. Sheet 2, we can get rid of sheet 3. So let's just delete sheet 3. Right click, delete. And then we'll rename sheet 2 master. So the first thing we need to do is we're just going to reserve how much space we want to use. We're going to be using rows A through T. Merge them all together and then just let's just title it really quick. Now, you can look back here. I actually used rows 1 and 2. So let's highlight A through T again, merge those, and here we're going to use what year or years of data we're going to be including. If you want to format these, you can. You would just do that by highlighting the cells, right clicking, coming down to format cells, and then you come to fill. I'm going to do fill effects, color. I mean, choose a nice golf green and and then you know you can change that however you want to do it we're gonna change the font to something a little more aristocratic seems appropriate considering that we golfers are snooty people so now if you look back here we're gonna create two more rows but we're not gonna merge them we're just gonna set them aside right now so highlight it and, or select them and then highlight them in black. And then what I want you to do is I want you to highlight the top of those two rows. Select on borders, come down to more borders. It is selecting on the single line. Click automatic for color, but click on white. And then click here, and that's telling it where that white border, it's telling where that white border to go. And voila, we have a white border. So we want everything, we want all the text in these two boxes to be white. Or you can use red or whatever you want to use. We're going to use white. Okay. And then we're going to separate those. Again, more borders, same line, same color on the right side of those boxes. And that separates them just like I have over here. We're also going to highlight all of the text in here and make it bold. And we're also going, we're not going to center it, we are going to center these ones though. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, highlight all of them, and surround them in a box. And so it just puts a nice little border there. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create this box. And what this represents is this represents a game, a day. And then this box will represent an, another day of golf. As you can see the dates are right here. And if you don't know the date, then you can put an X in it on the day like I did. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six. We need six rows, A through T. So let's just go down, down, six rows, and we're just going to box the whole thing. Now we have our, our area highlighted. First column, or the first row, is the title and we are not going to be merging these cells together. So do not click this. Um, we're just going to format all of these cells really quick, however you want to do it. I'm going to do it like I had over there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change everything in here to the color of font white, and we're going to type location, colon, right there. And then on this side, we're going to type date, and that's just a placeholder so you know what goes there. In column P, you're going to type slope. And for those of you who don't know, slope has to do with the difficulty of the course that you played on. I'm going to center them, center them. You don't have to center that one. And you can alter the font here if you want to as well. I am going to, just like I did on the other page. And I realized that I actually wanted to be making this on the master sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight 
the entire box, hold down the control key and press X, and that's cut, control cut. You can also do that by coming up here and clicking cut. Come over here to master, and um, I'm going to line it up. So we are on, we're starting on row 7, so I'm just going to come here and line it up with row 7 and press paste. So now it's there and no longer here, just so you know what happened. And again, I'll have to resize that. We are we are going to come back to this page, but right now we're going to create what we want from this daily report on this page. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create this data right here, which is kind of your daily report. This up here is your entire career report. This is your report for that day. So we're going to merge cells A and B. We're going to merge cells D and E, and F, G, and H, and then the rest are going to be single cells. We don't have to merge the rest of those. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put in those, those thick borders separating. Because you notice that border, that thick border is thicker than just a regular border. And I want these divided more prominently. So I'm going to do that. It's C, H, J, L, N, P, and R. Those are all the columns that are on the right side of those boxes. I want the heavy columns. So I'm going to come back to here and highlight all of those cells. And I highlighted all of those cells individually by holding down the control button when I clicked on them instead of clicking and dragging. So now that those cells are highlighted, I'm going to click up here and again come to more borders. I want the thicker border on the right side and it'll put it on the right side of all of those cells that I highlighted. So now at this point I'm going to enter the data. Right here we're just going to put holes. This box is going to be a formula and if you watched my budget video you know that I like to highlight the cells that have formulas in them to determine their, their values so that I don't enter values in there manually. So I'm just going to come down here and do a nice faint color. Here we're going to write company. That was those who were with us that day while we golfed. On the next section we're going to write handicap and that cell is going to stay white because we are going to be entering numbers into that manually later. Next to that we'll be writing par and we'll highlight that cell. And then we have score by handicap or score the score that you got including your handicap and that'll be highlighted. Then you'll have your score, your real score, had you not been included. Oh, you see how it did that? I don't want it to do that. That happens when you put R in parentheses. I'm just going to, like if I press space, so I'm going to use control Z or edit undo to get rid of that. And then I did it again because I pressed space, it's really fickle. So R, space, edit undo, tab. And that, that'll keep it there. And I want that cell highlighted because I'm not going to be playing with that one. Okay, the next cell over we're going to use for average par. And then that neighbor cell is blocked off. And the next one over is average putts. And that one is also not touched. I'm just going to double click to expand that. Okay, now I'm going to highlight all of these cells and click center so they look uniform. And then I'm going to highlight these cells again and click bold. And also I'm going to border them on the bottom. Just like that. Now we're going to go down the right side and define what each of these rows are going to do. Here we're going to do hole. We're going to do par, score, your real score, not your handicapped score. And then here we're going to do putts. I'm going to highlight these and center, and actually I'm going to right align them. And I'm going to border them on the right. I'm going to make them bold. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to highlight these. If you look back here, I had them in a in that same gray area because you don't want to alter anything in there. So I'm going to highlight those boxes just like that. I'm also going to change the color of the text in here. So I made that dark red. Make the score, leave it black. And then putts, I'm going to make blue. Like that. I'm going to highlight the, the whole row, whole H-O-L-E, row, and I'm going to actually change the color of the highlight just a little bit to the gray. 
and that sets it apart just a little bit. And I'm going to border it. I'm going to border it on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these rows the same color as the text for those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this row and give it a white font. I want this row to maintain a black font. And this row will already have a black font. So now along here at the top, we're just going to write 1, 2, 3, all the way across for up to 18, which is how many holes, which is the maximum number of holes one would normally golf on a day. I'm going to center them, bold them, italicize them. Now these four boxes over here I want to be different, because I want them to have the same color as that. So I'm going to fill them just like that. Right here, I'm going to put a right border on that box. And in here, I'm going to write totals. And then if you look back here, we've got, again, the numbers in these boxes have the same color as over here. So I'm going to do that. We don't have any text in there right now, but that's okay. Now that that's set up, we're going to create totals over here. We want this box to be a sum total. So I'm going to click Auto Sum. I'm going to click and drag this entire row. Enter. Center them, bold them. So what this has now done, this function, is now adding everything in these boxes together. But since there's nothing in those boxes, it's zero. If I were to put a 10 here, then total becomes 10. I'm going to center everything in here as well. Same thing for this column, auto summit the entire row next to it. Same thing for the one below it. So those numbers read zero right now and that's just fine. So hopefully you can see what's kind of happening here. When you're copying your scorecard down here on the computer, you can write down the par of, the, of hole one, the score you got on hole one, the real score, and then the number of putts that you did on that hole. And as you enter in all that data, you know, it may only be seven holes if you did a par three course, nine holes or 18 holes, that'll total up over here. Up here at holes, because these are, remember this box is gray, this is gray, these are all going to have functions depending on. So what I've designed this to do is there are really only four places that you need to enter data. Your handicap, because that's going to be based on you know, who you're playing with and what this, the course is and whatever. So if you have a handicap on the course, you're going to have to enter that in manually. But then you enter in the pars for each hole, the scores you got on each of those holes, and each of the, the number of putts that you did on each hole. So those are the only areas you have to enter data. The rest will figure out on its own after we've we filled this out. So we want this to be a function. So we're going to highlight the cell as we already have and we press equal. And then we're going to write count. Now what that does is it's a function that just counts the number of cells in the highlighted area. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these cells. So if you look up here, the function in this formula is the cell equals count B11 through S11, column B, row 11, through column S, row 11. We're going to press enter. Now that reads zero because what it's doing is it's counting the number of cells that have figures in them, that have data in them, anything. Because none of these cells have data in them, it shows nothing. However, if we enter 25 here, that turns into a 1, because out of all the cells here, only one of them has data. Okay, So as you enter and play throughout your day, let's say you have, well, let's, let's look at a finished product. Right here, 9. It's because out of these 18 holes, 9 or out of these 18 cells right here, 9 of them have data. And so it's automatically calculating that we golfed 9 holes that day. So that's that. You will not have to enter the number of holes that you golfed. Just entering your scores down here will do that for you. Your group, obviously your company, you're going to have to enter that manually. Your handicap, you're going to enter that manually. Par is going to be an, a sum function. Auto sum, but it's, it's, it's auto highlighting this area, just guessing what you want. That's not what you want. You're going to come down here and you're just going to click and drag uh, B10 through S10 and press enter. Now it's reading zero because there's no data in here. If we find that this is a par five, then there'll be a five. 
most courses that I've played on are par 72s. Um, so w once you enter in all the par data from the holes that you golfed, then you would come up with that. You know, if you only golf golfed an executive course, then you might have a par of 23 or something. Your score, your handicap score, and your real score are going to be dependent upon the data in these cells. So let's start with the real score. That's what this is going to be right here. This is also going to be your real score. So what you can do is you can just cheat and say that's going to equal that. So this cell, what we just told it, this cell equals T11. Press enter. So whenever you enter your numbers into this data, into these cells, if you got a 10 on that one, 10, 10. And then your, high, your uh, handicap score is going to be dependent upon what's in here. So the handicap score is going to equal your real score minus your handicap. So if you have a handicap of 7, and then you shot 20 out of these 5 holes, your real score is 5 times 4, which is 20, but your handicap is actually going to be 13 because of the handicap of 7 that you had. So that's how the handicap works. But that's again why you have to enter that data manually because that's going to change every game. So this box is your average par. Now it's not asking average as far as what's the average par on the course. The average par is referring to your average shot in relation to the par on that hole. So for example, be five over. Gosh, I'm just struggling with this. Sucking son of a sucker. Son of a sucker. Okay. 